We'll be starting here in just about a minute or so. Uh, welcome to anyone who is going to be signing on right away. Got some easy listening jazz or something in the background, but if the music bothers you guys, make sure that you uh, comment and I'll either turn it down or I'll turn it off. Okay, it's just about two o'clock. This is Vivian Davis from Tutoring Art and uh, welcome to my live stream. We're gonna be painting with wine as a medium today. Uh, it is one of the sessions that I've planned to do, uh, probably repeat as well, along with some other mediums. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about, my, about myself in case you haven't already done your research. I am a uh, artist, a resident artist, I should say, at the Art Center, which is in Norfolk, Virginia. So for some of you listening from Maryland, uh, some of you may have known me in Maryland. I had relocated about seven months ago, and uh, we bought a house on the bay, the Chesapeake Bay, which is near and dear to my husband as he was raised in Maryland near the, uh, actually in Salisbury on the Eastern Shore. So uh, we didn't move too far from where we were because we have grown kids and uh, of course they put that guilt factor on you. But anyway, we love it here. We've had a great time so far. We are on the bay, which means we get to take beach walks during this uh, kind of self-quarantine process we're going through. And we also can take a drive to Virginia Beach um, anytime as long as we distance ourselves. So that is why I'm uh, doing these sessions because I realize that a lot of people are cooped up inside. Some people are still having to work and I'm very grateful for the doctors and the nurses and re first responders and, and the essential personnel that are still working. I know some of you uh, have to still make your commute and you have to be very cautious with who you talk to and how close you get to people. So God bless you all. Uh, but for those of you stuck at home, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and although it may typically be a little too early for me to drink, I think I'll be pouring a little glass of wine here just momentarily, so if you guys have a little wine you want to pour, feel free to join me in our early happy hour. As I was saying, I am a, I'm an artist here in, in Virginia. I am a professional artist. I do commission work. I also have been teaching since about 2007. I've taught kids and I've taught adults in a lot of variety of mediums, which is part of the reason I'm not really well disciplined because I tend to really enjoy a variety of mediums and love to work in them. So I do some painting with acrylics. I started out uh, as a graphic artist and a scenic painter for theater years and years. And so I started working with acrylic painting. Um, watercolor, uh, I just do periodically, but uh, I've taught some classes in beginning watercolor. It's not my preferred medium, but uh, I do a little bit of that. I do some sculpting, I do some pyrography, and if you guys aren't familiar with py pyrography, it is the process of burning, either on wood or perhaps on leather. Uh, there, I'm sure there are other surfaces as well. Those are the two most recognizable. And I've done a little bit of that as well, and I'm going to do a lesson on that uh, maybe next week. I haven't figured out my schedule for next week yet, but I'll post it later today. And if not next week, the following week, if you guys wanna watch that. So today, painting with wine. Let me tell you a little bit of how I got started. And while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and pour that glass of wine. Now, this is one of the wines that I will be using. It's a red blend. I haven't used it previously. I just tested it this morning. And so it looks like it's a nice color. So we're going to use some of that. Put a little temporary cork back thing on here. And one of the other wines I'm going to be using is this blue wine. Now, you can't see the blue in the bottle because I used the last bit of it today. I had used it previously on a painting, but that's the brand if you guys want to walk it down. That's who makes it. I mean, write it down. That's, um, that's who uh, is the winery is. I can't even read it. It's a Spanish 
wine and I actually had to order it online. Um, I tried to find a different variety of a blue wine, but unfortunately that's not available in the United States. So this is the only one that I could get through a distributor. So I'll kind of move that around. And if you're interested, you can always pick up one of those. I don't particularly love the taste. It's a Chardonnay. I'm typically a sweet wine kind of person, but I won't be painting with any sweet wines today for the fact that wine already has a certain level of sugars in it. And the more sugar, the more residue it leaves. So I will be painting with more of the dry <clears throat> white, like the Chardonnay and uh, more of the dry reds. Um, so this red blend is, like I said, a first one for me. I have used different uh, wine, different wines from different wineries. So I don't have a preferred favorite yet. We locally have a national chain called Cooper's Hawk and they also, um, they buy their grapes and then they create their wines and they have such a variety. So I've used some of their wines. They're a little more expensive. They're very tasty. And so thankfully I only have to use a small amount. In fact, what you see in my glass right now is probably more than you need for your um, painting unless you're creating something very, very large. And so that amount right there would be boiled down. And so the process is I boil it down. I put that small amount I've boiled down into these little containers and I mark them. So you're gonna see I'm also gonna be using a Shiraz a Pinot Noir, a Cabernet, which I have just a little tiny bit of because I've used a lot of that, and a Merlot. And I'm going to show you uh, the colors on a test paper that I created. And if you've been on my, on my uh, event page, you'll see I posted a couple of the ones I had done previously. Typically before I do a painting, I test out the colors that I'm using uh, because I don't know how the wines are going to paint. Uh, you can see these are very, very nice and deep and rich. And some of the lighter wines like a rosé will still give you a pink. So if you're wanting lighter colors, which normally I would have one on my palette this time around, but I don't then you'll 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 see that the, those that will paint a lighter color now unfortunately i can't get a yellow i've got the blue you'll see how that chardonnay paints below but i haven't found a yellow and i did find a kind of a greenish wine but it doesn't really translate either so right now this is my color palette and you'll see the merlot and the pinot are my lighter tones and if you look over to your right because i actually have the camera faced in the right direction this time. <laughs> My last session, we did everything backwards because I had it faced, facing towards me. Uh, anyway, on the right side, you'll see it's a little richer color. And that's because when you paint with wine, much like watercolor, if you wanna build color, you're gonna wanna paint on top and create layers. Uh, and you need to let it dry just like you do with watercolor paint. So I let those dry. And so you'll see the Merlot, the first coat, is just very light and if that's what you're going for then you would only paint that light coat and then if you want it to be a little brighter or a little darker then you add a second coat on the right and you'll see it gets a little darker now shiraz interestingly enough didn't really get much darker but it became more red um, has more of a, a reddish tone in there and the phone my phone is what i'm using to record this and it doesn't give you the most accurate colors it's close, but again, hopefully you've already boiled down some wine or will be doing so if you're watching this later. And you'll be able to do that and test your colors on some watercolor paper. So I have the Cabernet is very similar to the Shiraz, not a whole lot of difference in color. Um, and we have the Pinot and we have the Red Blend and the Red Blend is very purple. Strangely enough, a lot of the red wines will paint more purplish now you don't see that as well here it looks more burgundy but it really does have more of a purple tone and another one which is actually one of my favorites that has more of a purple tone is a malbec 
and Malbec is a beautiful color, I think, when it paint when you paint with it. And then obviously your Chardonnay, you're going to get that light blue. You don't get a whole lot darker. You can. I didn't do the second coat on this because I just did it this morning. I only had a little bit of wine left there. But uh, when you do a second coat, you'll see it won't be as dark as some of the other colors become when you do that. So there's my palette for today. Okay. So the other materials that I had mentioned on my on my event page was you would need, and, and this is a good thing to have, by the way, I'm not just throwing it to the side. I'm gonna want to have that where I can see my colors because it's hard to remember what colors paint or which wines paint like which color because when you look at your palette, which in this case are a couple of little ceramic palettes that I have. Oh, can't rotate my phone, I have to remember that. Then you'll see they look a lot alike. So I have used ceramic containers and I used a dry erase marker so that I could mark my Merlot, my Shiraz, my Cabernet, my Red Blend, see I have to even think about it, my Pinot, and then I just marked my Chardonnay with CH, but I'm pretty sure I would know what that one was. I'm working out of my kitchen today, so I'm just gonna walk you through my materials. So I have my little containers, and if you use, um, you can actually use one of these egg crate cartons if you just wanna be able to throw away afterwards. These work really well, so save your egg carton, cut it up into as many pieces as you need, and then you can put your wines in there. And then I have some paper towel, which I'm gonna be cleaning my brushes on. I have a container of water, of which I've already used a brush, so I've just got it sitting in there right now, just kinda of rinsing. And the brushes that I use, me personally, and some of you being artists, I'm sure have your own choices. I have used these Princeton, they're called Princeton Art and Brush Company. They're reasonably priced. I teach a lot of classes, so I, use them for myself and I use them for my students. I like to give my students nice brushes. And I have different um, round brushes here, uh, obviously different sizes. I have a nice thin one here and I've got even a, this is also a Princeton art and brush. Um, I have a detail, it's a little teeny tiny detail brush here. And then I have um, a pencil for which we'll talk about that in just a moment. So uh, next, I have watercolor paper. The brand that I'm using, you can actually get at Walmart. It's Canson, and I like this one more than anything uh, because it doesn't, um, you know, I'm not even sure if I can describe it. It doesn't, I don't even know if I can. There are papers, like I, I've bought a, some papers from Blick uh, online, and they're, you would think, because their quality paints are not uh, uh, bad, but their paper is not good. And, and I just can't, I can't describe what the difference is, but you just don't get the, the it doesn't adhere as nice. Um, so that's the paper I'm using. I have put a sketch of, our, of my sample here of the um, photo reference we're using. I had posted that on the event page. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. So I'm going to show you on my page if you want to do a dual screen or you want to open up another Facebook page, go on to my page and look at that. I also have a masking medium. I'm not going to use it today, but some people prefer to use that. And if you're a novice and you're worried you're going to not leave any white, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to just kind of cover up areas so that you don't paint everywhere. Um, I have my lap, my handy dandy laptop. I am using a little stand for my phone and um, on my laptop right now I have uh, some a uh, couple of my paintings and I'm not sure if you had a chance to look at it when you uh, were looking at the event page but I did paint them on I mean to post them on the event uh, discussion and so this is the first painting I did this is a tricolored heron and when I did this painting I did it just to try the process out. I actually had never painted with wine before. I saw a video in an article about an artist in Europe that paints with wine. And he 
would do these large murals. And I, I posted an, an artic, the article and the video about him on my page, on the tutoring art page. So if you scroll down a little ways, you should be able to find it. And that'll give you a little history on the artist. And he's just phenomenal. So the only thing I couldn't find, he doesn't share a lot of information, is how, um, how long this lasts. I, I thought, well, this is a very organic medium. Is it, it, is it going to last a while? So I waited about a year, a little over a year, before I did a second painting. And I hung that in my dining room. And so that way I could kind of tell whether it was going to disintegrate. Once the painting was finished, I sprayed it with a, several coats of a fixative, just to preserve it, and, and it did really, really well. So I was very happy about that. Now, you can kind of see there's some colors in here that are not the wine. I did not have the blue wine back then. I did cheat a little bit, and I used a pigment. Why? Because this is a tricolored heron, and when I realized that I needed the blue, I didn't want to substitute it, substitute it with a red tone. So I did put a little blue in there. And I did mix a little bit of paint with the color, but I also put a little bit of a dark tone here with little grays in places. Um, and then I, these are actually the wine. They're just several coats of the wine. This is several coats of the wine. So most of it is wine, but there is a little pigment dispersed. Um, the next painting I did, oh, you just kind of saw me briefly. The next painting I did was uh, this mermaid. I When I moved to... Virginia mermaids seem to be the theme around Norfolk, Virginia. And so I thought, well, I want to do a demonstration. I did it at the Ocean View Art Show in uh, Ocean View in Norfolk uh, back in October. And I started it there and then I finished it at home. And obviously I used a few more pigments in this one later. I do have some green in there and I do have some dark color on the fish. Um, and I even have a little bit of a bright magenta in her hair. But most of the rest of this is just the wine color, a teeny tiny bit of yellow. It's all mixed with wine. So I used my um, white wine to mix in the yellow and some of the other colors so it wouldn't change the colors, but it was used with wine. And then this color back here is that blue wine. So you'll see that's about as dark as it gets when you paint with that blue wine. So that's the second one. Now, the one I'm working on now, um, actually, I'm, that's not the next one I'm showing you, but the next picture I'm showing you are a couple of small samples I did. I was gonna teach a class at the Art Center. Um, like I said, I'm a resident artist there. And it got postponed uh, because of um, the COVID-19 guidelines, and so the center is closed. So I am working from home. So if there are some noises here and there, I do have a little dog, but I did move him downstairs. You might hear him bark every now and then, um, but hopefully not too many interruptions. And so I did those on a small cardstock, watercolor cardstock, and just kind of playing around. Um, and then I used Micron pens. And if you're not familiar with Micron pens, you can get them in different sizes. This is what they look like. Actually, actually I have it upside down. There we go. Micron pens um, to kind of fill in, uh, but just because it was a small painting and, um, and I kind of made these very quickly. And then I have my jellyfish, same thing, a little less Micron pen, but uh, definitely has some of that. And that blue in the background is the blue wine and these are entirely in wine except for a little bit of yellow on the jellyfish and i think i used a little bit of red pigment on the cowboy's scarf so there's a little bit of extra red there that i did not get from wine alone okay so that was that one and then last but not least i'm going to show you my work in progress which is going to be entirely in wine. I started it as a demonstration at the Dart Center, and then I worked on it just slightly during a test uh, live video on Monday. And now, this is about as far as I got because I've been busy doing some other things, but you'll see that I've got a pretty good start there. So I'll be working on that next week. Hopefully we'll finish that up, okay? So those are my examples. Now, I'm gonna come out of here real quick 
and I'm going to scroll down and if you haven't already pulled up the photo reference, this is what we're using today. This is not my photo. So if you're creating this painting today to sell this, I prefer that you not, because I am just doing this as a demonstration today. I wanted something that had some bright colors in it. And so I chose this, but I didn't want to have to fill the whole page with color because we're only going to be working for about an hour and a half of which at this point we have about an hour and 10 minutes. So there's a the photo reference. So if you can go on to another window and open up Facebook again and maybe go to that picture. You can download that. You can use that as your photo reference. Okay. So I'm putting you in my holder uh, here momentarily. I'm going to show you a couple more things. So I've got my water. I've got my little containers. I've got a blow dryer because we're going to be working quick. So we're going to make sure we have a blow dryer to dry some of that so we can do some color buildup. Um, if you haven't obviously sketched this photo onto your paper, then I recommend that you maybe take a moment and do that now as we're getting started. I did a transfer, which is another process you can use if you are um, not an artist, but you're interested and you wanna have some fun with this. I took this photo, I printed it out, I centered it on the page. I take a piece of transfer paper, uh, which you'll see has two sides. It's been used multiple times. Um, one side is darker than the other. The side goes down, and then you place the photo on top, and you can position it onto the paper. You'll want to either secure it with your hand or tape it at the top, and then you just trace the lines that you need for your painting. And you can probably see I used this paper because there's some lines in there that weren't in there originally. And so there is my transfer onto the canvas. Now, the reason I did this, I'm not a big fan of putting pencil on watercolor paper. I'm not a big fan of putting pencil on canvas either. So a lot of times if I design something, I'll design it on paper and transfer it onto my canvas. Um, it doesn't, sm this won't smear. And it just gives me a nice cleaner line without having to make a, you know, erase or anything like that. Although I do have some erase marks here for some reason. Okay, and then the watercolor paper is an option. However, all those paintings you saw, other than the samples, I painted on canvas. I have a canvas board here. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you the difference with how, how it paints on there. The canvas board won't be exactly the same as a canvas that's been stretched, but it'll be close enough for you to see the difference um, in, in how that paint adheres. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set you guys down and kind of angle you towards the paper. All right. So I can't see if people are on... Um, so if anybody's on watching this, if you guys can comment, just say hello and let me know you're here. I know a lot of folks will probably re-watch this later because uh, two o'clock is not necessarily convenient. Um, some people are home with their kids and that's not exactly going to be conducive to take some time to drink some wine, which I'm going to take a sip real quick. But if you're painting with me now, Feel free to comment. All right. Uh, and you know, you know, the other reason I might not be able to see you guys commenting is I kind of removed notifications. I was afraid my phone would ring during this video. <laughs> so I'll see your comments after. Uh, and I, so I won't be able to answer your questions now. But if you are able to comment and you ask a question, I will answer it afterwards. So just look for that after the fact. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get started. I'm going to work with a flat brush and do a little background painting to start. Actually, i got to find my flat brush. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. It's in the water. Silly me. All right, so I'm going to rinse my brush really well, but I'm also going to dry it. I don't want to dilute the, the paint. And because I want to do kind of a light background, I'm going to work with the Pinot to start. So I'm going to pick up a little Pinot and I'm gonna go around the outside of my paper and just kind of move it around a little bit. Now, what I like about canvas is the paint won't completely, and I say paint, I know I'm working with wine, 
but I call it paint because right now I'm using it as paint. It won't completely adhere to the paper, I mean to the canvas as well as it does to the paper. And that's a good thing only because watercolor paper isn't very forgiving. Now, I'm also a finger painter. So I may, you'll see me kind of blend things out a little bit that way. And so I'm just gonna put a little, so you can kind of see the flower better. I'm gonna take some of this color. Now the background in this sample photo is green. And some of you who know me, some of the artists that know me, no, I'm not a huge fan of green. I like mint green. I like mint green on bicycles. I like fluorescent green on dog leashes. You know, there's reasons I like green, but not necessarily outdoors. I am a blue sky, blue water kind of girl. Okay, so I just want you to kind of see how this works. Uh, I'm not going to go right back over it. I'm going to let it dry, much like I would do with watercolor. And just kind of let it kind of fade out there. So I'm going to move this every now and then so you guys can see a little better. So I'm still working with Pinot. So I would work with the lightest wine you have. So if you have a, a rosé and you want to do rosé around the outside, you know, feel free. I did have some pre-planning with this session. And that's why I suspect a lot of people will be watching this later instead of while it's live. So they can kind of see, you know, maybe what wine they want to work with. But, um, but any wines will do. Again, this is practice just so you can see how it works. Now the difference between watercolor and wine, which other than the obvious, you shouldn't drink watercolor paint, is again, the sugars in the wine. So on some of my big canvas pieces, you'll see a little bit of residue. It doesn't bother me that much, but this last painting I'm working on now, I'm trying to cut down some of that residue. You won't necessarily notice while you're painting at first. And on watercolor paper, you might not see it at all, which is the downfall to working on a canvas rather than watercolor paper. But I like my uh, canvases. And I wanted to go big scale. So, okay, so I'm just kind of Moving this around a little bit, getting an outside color. So you can, again, just see the flower. Or this is a magnolia, a Japanese magnolia, I think, to be more certain. And I don't know where I got the picture. It may have been Instagram or something. I just wanted a nice easy photo reference. Now, obviously, jellyfish might have been a little bit easier. And when I teach the class in person, which I will be doing at the De Art Center at some point in the future, we will probably work on watercolor postcards, which will then give everyone the opportunity to finish. This is not probably something we're gonna finish today, at least not during this live feed. Uh, I encourage you to finish now that you're going to kind of see how easy this is. And if you do, and when you do, if you would post it on my page or tag me, Tutoring Art, that would be great so we can kind of see. I didn't post pictures from my last session, which was on Wednesday yet. I keep forgetting, in all honesty, because they ended up in the discussion section of the event uh, I was hoping that people could comment in the comments with a photo of, of their work in progress, but uh, wasn't the case. So, And if for some reason you are still sketching and you haven't got any paint on here, the background is not that important to get in first. You can go back and do that later. That's why I started with that. You don't even have to have a background if you don't want one. But I want to be, go back and later I want to show you how when you add a little bit more color later that it's going to get darker and 
So I thought, well, let me do a little bit of background. So I've got some branches here. I don't know if I'm going to keep them, but I guess I am initially. So I'm going to go ahead and work around that. That's a little harder to see. That I can't tell. Here we go. Okay. I want the background to be a little less of the focus. So there's some awesome watercolor artists out there. I, like I said, I was in Maryland for several years, and so I follow a lot of artists up there, and I've taken some classes from some. I've had artists come out and do demonstrations. I started a group up in Maryland called the Sykesville Painting Club, and these wonderful ladies and gentlemen that are part of this organization keep, are keeping it going, thankfully. And one of the things that we did, and still they continue to do, is we had the artists in the group teach workshops. And at our annual kickoff, we'd always have a speaker, and we had an artist by the name of April Rimpo. And so you can follow her on Instagram or on Facebook, April Rimpo, R-I-M-P-O. And I, she does a lot of scene work. She also does some, uh, I'm saying, um, not portraits so much as but people. She does a lot of people. And she's so good. And I, I just love her compositions because I'm not a realist. I am about life, but not about my art. I kind of like to escape. So most of the time, I focus on composition and color. And I don't always land that either, but that's what my goal usually is. So when I paint, I really appreciate, or when I, when I look at people's art, I really appreciate their composition. And she has some amazing stories in her paintings. So I think maybe it's Rimpo Art on Instagram. I'm not sure. So she doesn't know I'm giving her a shout out. Now, I, I've got artists that work in a variety of mediums. A lot of them are oil painters. And so some of my good friends are some amazing artists. Um, Wiley Perky is a, a fantastic acrylic and watercolor artist, um, and he has created a series of books called, um, well, they have different titles, but The Zombie Snowman of Ellicott City is uh, the first one, and it's really fun. But more, even more fun than the stories are his illustrations, so you'll have to check that out. Also, um, one of my favorite artists, and I think she knows this, I don't want to give her a big head, but Molly Sims, she's an oil painter, and she paints wildlife, and you can find her under Molly Sims Art, and Molly is fabulous, and I just love, she has a kind of a glow to her paintings, and her compositions are fantastic, and I love, love, love wildlife, so I really enjoy seeing her work, and she was a member and also on the board of the club the painting club up in Maryland, and she is a member of Horse Spirit Art Gallery. Hopefully I said that right. And so you can kind of see some of her work there, and it's available for sale. All right, so I have some a bunch of color on here. I think you guys have probably not seen me painting just now. I realized I've been painting over here. <laughs> but hopefully you're painting with me. And this is what I've done so far. I'm going to turn it so you can see. So there's my background, okay? I'm gonna start painting inside, move my finger. All right, I'm gonna start up at the top again. I just have to remember to move this since I can't see comments and you guys can't tell me to move it. All right, so when I looked at my palette of colors and I started out with the Pinot, the Pinot is lighter. I wanna go with a darker color and I wanna to go too dark just yet. So the next one I think I'm going to use is the Shiraz. And even if you use the Merlot and you use the Pinot and you look at these in person, the Merlot has a little bit more purple than the Pinot does. So that's another thing to think about, whether you're working in a red or you're working in a more of a purple tone. So I'm going to go ahead and go with, what did I just say? I'm going to go with the Shiraz, okay? So I'm going to put that back up here. 
And I'm gonna start in the center. So in the center in here, um, and if you look at the photo reference in that uh, picture, it's very pink, kind of a fuchsia pink, and I don't have um, fuchsia in my wine colors. And if this, I, if I wanted to use some pigment now, like I've used in my other paintings, I would likely go with um, the fluid acrylics and they are just little tubes that have really, really strong color. And so what I uh, then would suggest is that you take a little pa a palette with the little wells and put some wine in there and just do a drop of the fluid acrylic and test your color before you use it because those are very, very strong colors. Okay, but I'm just gonna go straight away with the Shiraz. So I'm gonna dip into my red here. In fact, I'm gonna scoot this a little bit so you can see better. Okay, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in a little bit. So if you're just watching, sometimes it's like watching paint dry. It's much more fun, obviously, to paint at the same time, but you might by watching just to see how it works, right? That's fine. Just happy to be entertaining you. I'm not very funny, I will tell you that right now. In fact, people probably would say I'm more corny than anything else. And years and years ago, I took a Toastmaster class for you older people out there, you would know what that is. I'm not sure they still do it, but they might. Uh, Toastmasters helps you do public speaking, which helped me conquer my fear, not to say that I don't get a little nervous every now and then, but it helped me conquer my fear uh, and worked with my uhs and my ums. But for some reason, when I'm doing these, less than when I'm in person, or more than when I'm in person, I tend to throw out those ums and all that. So I'm gonna go around in my um, photo reference and hopefully you guys have that up. You can kind of watch along, but you will see there are several dark areas in that photo. And so I'm gonna work on those and I'm not using my darkest color, but I'm using one of the darker colors to kind of get that started. So I'm using the Pinot. Now I'm gonna come up here and there's a little bit, just a little bit of color right in between. And there's a lot on the back of this petal. If you want it to dry darker, you can go thicker and just kind of let it pool there. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm going to let this part here pool a little bit so that it dries a little darker to start. And then I'm going to dry my brush and just drag a little bit out into here because really what's happening on the rest of this is just a little bit of that color is coming up into there, but it's got some white in there and I don't want to get it too dark to start. Okay, so I just kind of slid some of it over and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull just on the edge. Now you don't want to pull when you're painting with watercolor much like with wine now, I'm gonna let you know, if you just painted there and it's wet, probably not a good idea to come back and paint there because you will get the bleed over and you wanna avoid that. So I have a little gap I can see now, I see a little white right there. I'm not gonna do it right now, first of all, because I'm not using the right color. And second of all, because I just painted on the other side of there and I don't want my color to bleed. So I'm gonna wait on that. I'll fix it later. All right, where's the next place? Pick up some of my Pinot. And this leaf is folding over. So right in here in this little area is gonna be darker. So I'm gonna let that pool a little. And all the way down, tiny bit. But again, it's one of those where it starts to fade let me get some of that color. And I don't want to leave a line um, specifically. So I'm gonna use my wet brush and just drag some of that color up. 
which is what I could have done here, but these actually had some lines. I think I got a little too close together, but that's all right. Okay. I'm gonna need to get darker in here. I'm gonna pull a little, not much, because it's not gonna pull exactly in any shape but it'll give me some darkness, and then when I paint over it again, it'll get even darker than that. Okay, now you can start light the whole time and come back, which is what I'd recommend, but for demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, you know what I just saw? I missed a leaf. I actually am supposed to have one in here. Oh, not a leaf, a petal, that's all right. In fact, hmm, did I still get away with it? I might still be able to get away with it. Yeah, you know what? If I was on a canvas, I'd definitely be able to get away with it because, again, the benefit of the canvas, it doesn't adhere as well, which takes a little longer to dry. But because of that, you can erase things out, which kind of makes gives you that feel of uh, oil painting. You can erase and remove it. And also what I learned is even if you... If you paint two or three coats, you can probably remove a little bit, not all of it, but lighten it up. So yeah, there was a petal there that I forgot. Um, and so I'm not gonna have the white up there that I need. That's all right. Okay. All right, I'm going underneath this petal. You keep an eye so I don't start painting in an area that you can't see. I know you guys couldn't see me before, so I'm sorry about that. I have to get used to this video thing. So used to teaching in person. This is a little different. You can't see me make funny faces, for one thing. I'm not sure you'd want to see me anyway. It's been a rough little quarantine here. I need to do something with my hair. Okay, uh, let's see. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to scoot this a little so you can continue to see. All right. And I'm going to come in here and add some. Again, the background, I used the Pinot. And now I'm using the, what did I say I was using? The Shiraz. Okay. some color right here on the edge and again underneath here and I kind of went light there but I'm gonna leave it alone I want to come back to it okay and there's a little tiny bit right on the petal there I actually should have put some here maybe a little bit here and at this petal here is kind of folded over a little, so I'm going to put a little color there. I forgot about that. Oh, wait. Let me turn so you guys can see. This one right here. Probably a good thing I didn't do it right away because I'm not sure if that area was completely dry just yet. Okay. All right. Let's come down here and do a little bit more. So we got some of that. We got some of this. There's, I'm gonna use one of the lighter paints for up in here later. So right, so right now there is color in there, but I'm just not doing that yet because this paint, this particular shade of the wine is too dark. I'm gonna continue to say paint, but this is wine, I promise. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to work on this little bud here. Now this little bud is going to end up really, really dark. So I'm just going to do uh, a, a little coat right here on this lined area. Um, and I might actually switch to my darkest, which was that red blend. Maybe mix those two. 
and then leave it there to pool and dry. Put kind of a line in here, as well as it's got a few lines that kind of come in. I'm not using a very thin brush, so I don't want to put too much just yet, or it's going to blend together, which is the problem I had up top. So. So one of my favorite artists is not from the United States. She actually lives up in, in Australia, up in Australia, I should say way over in Australia. And she, um, I found her on Instagram and I feel real bad right now because now I'm drawing a blank on her name. So happens when you get old. Anyway, she paints in acrylic um, and she does these huge flower um, I, should, I want to say what like like a flower bunch that you'd see in a vase but she makes them giant scale so they're huge paintings and her instagram page is seashell studio art studio seashell art studios i think um i'll put that in the comments later too uh, she sadly has cancer and is going through chemo right now. So when she has some time and is feeling well, she's been painting on a smaller scale. But if you go back through her Instagram feed, you're going to see that she has done some pretty awesome large paintings of flowers. And they're just absolutely stunning. So I love, love, love to see what she comes up with next. And she is one of my favorites. All right, I'm still working with this charade. No, I went back. I just did this little section with the red blend, but now I'm with the, on the Shiraz. And I'm gonna do the corner of this. Now, switching the colors, you're gonna see when they dry that most of the time you'll see a difference. Once in a while, you're gonna run across a wine that even though on the watercolor paper, it distinctively looked a little different Maybe it was because of the paper. There could be a variety of reasons, but you know, maybe it doesn't give you the color that you want exactly. And that's why I say practice with this. But the other thing you can do is cover it up with another color. So for example, if I'm painting with this Shiraz and then I decide that it's too close to the red blend, I can go back and maybe put the Merlot over it. Um, blending the two colors together will change the, the color on you, so much like when you do with paints. All right, where's my Shiraz? I was trying to go in the wrong one. All right, and then down here, there's one that's folded over. And I'm gonna use that red blend again. Didn't even clean my brush that time, although I do recommend if you're trying to be pure with your color that you clean in between. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm disappointed that I turned off my notifications because I didn't really mean to do it for the f live video, but it was what I had to do to keep my phone from ringing in the middle of this. I've not had this happen, so I didn't know what would happen if it started to ring. It didn't ring the other the last two times. Not that I get a lot of phone calls, but you know you get those um, scam calls, and I get a, quite a few of those. So I'll put a little bit of color here. And this might be a little too dark, so I'm gonna clean my brush. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm gonna move my water so you guys can kind of see what I'm dipping in here and how I'm cleaning. I've already see, messed up my paper towel. And um, where was I? All right, so I'm gonna switch to one of my lighter colors, which was my Pinot because really the color in here is not that dark. Okay, let me blend it out with my finger since I started out too dark. Okay, how are we looking so far? Not too bad, this is what I have. So far, you can, you can definitely see the difference in the color between here and here. And I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see it yet on the others until we get a little darker. And if you want that brightness from that photo that we're using, then using a magenta fluid acrylic, just a teeny tiny, the slightest little drop 
in your wine will give it that brightness. And that's how I did that on my bigger paintings. Um, okay, so still going with the Shiraz. I'm going to come in here. Just a little bit of color in there. And some in here. So Ross is going to be more purple, though. So it's going to end up with more purple in this than pink. Mm, you know what I just did? I'm going to wipe that out a little bit. Because I think that's my background. This is actually the petal here. Sorry about that. We're getting where I need to look at that better. That's the petal, which is a little folded. And so I am going to wet my brush, kind of pull some of this paint back up because the color will be different. <clears throat> and the background was Pinot. Put some Pinot back there. That way. When it dries, I remember it's there. And I'm gonna just put a little second coat of Pinot over here. And let that fade out a little. It's gonna get a little darker this time when it dries. All right. So this is a bud here which I didn't do all the details for. And I'm going to use my red blend, I think. It's a little darker on the bottom. And it just painted there, so I'm going to leave a little space for now. So, I'm not sure. Okay, so this is the another petal, I think. And then this is the petal underneath, of which it has a little color over here. Okay. All right, we'll keep going. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys. This music's a little too easy listening for me. I'm not necessarily a jazz fan, but I listen to it every now, it's relaxing. I tend to listen to more classical and uh, love Andrea Bocelli when I'm painting, but surely his voice would overpower my instructions at this point. <laughs> so we won't be listening to Andrea while I paint this time. Sometimes I listen to um, contemporary Christian music. Sometimes I listen to some pop. Um, I have a playlist of uh, Spanish music because I'm uh, Cuban. My parents uh, came here from Cuba a very long time ago. And I've been doing some mission trips to Central America, worked on my Spanish so I could kind of connect with some of my roots. Uh, I was supposed to go to Cuba April 4th, but unfortunately, the trip was canceled. So here's hoping that it, you know, is something I get to do before the year end, because I've been wanting to do this for so very long. Wanted my brother to go with me. He is, uh, bo he was born in Cuba, uh, but his schedule was too busy. And while tourism was, or tourism was open, we weren't able to go. Uh, and I've been to the Dominican Republic with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I've also been down there with Sowers of the Kingdom, which is a, a group in its own. Um, I call those people friends of mine. I met their leader, uh, Bruce, on a Habitat trip. And then he, you know, asked me to you know, come back with sewers. They're building a mission house. They've got a mission school, which educates uh, children that can't get into the public school. 
and they work with local churches and they do a lot of great things for the community. So I, uh, I love them. I'm going to hopefully go back with them and uh, spend some time with them and do a little work for them um, either at the end of this year or ne- early next year. And I have been to Nicaragua with Habitat and my first trip was actually to Romania. I have some wonderful Romanian friends that I cannot speak with because I don't know any of the language, but it's interesting how we all still manage to communicate. And now I have many Romanian friends on Facebook and they follow me and I follow them and it's just kind of nice to see. I didn't get to go back um, and finish their housing because we did a big build which was um, cut short Uh, due to some permits and so we only got to build a little bit of what was needed for the homes so I saw later uh, when people went back uh, to work on the houses how they turned out it turned out wonderful Um, these people are now in their homes and very happy and Habitat just does some wonderful things all right so I'm just kind of playing now and I'm going to use my blow dryer and kind of let some of this dry. I have a lot of color on here right now. So if you have a handy dandy blow dryer and you're painting with me, I suggest you do that now. I'll put this on low. Just kind of go through here. Because I want to come back and I want to show you, uh, because I'm not as concerned about finishing this as I am about showing you how the colors change when you go back and and do a little bit more wine on there. So the other things I guess I can tell you about painting with wine should be enough is because again because of the sugar content it doesn't dry as quick on canvas, doesn't dry necessarily as quick on watercolor paper. Uh, The residue, you can brush off once it's fully dry, a little bit of it, you can get that off, but it is going to be sticky. So you'll have to put some sort of fixative over it, um, definitely before you go and, you know, have it uh, duplicated if you want to have prints made and, you know, make sure you, you cover that really, really well. Also when you're handling it, um, even when it's been dry for a while, it's still going to be a little bit sticky. And so when you're handling it, be real careful with that. Take a little sip of my wine. I'd ask everybody how you're doing, but since I, oh, I'm trying to lost you temporarily. That happened to me on the last feed. Oh, there's a lot of people doing these videos right now. Different types of videos for different reasons. Okay, what am I working with? I am going back to my Shiraz. I'm going to forgot to do a little bit of color here because this one is like all color except for the very top. You already see some of the color. All right, so let's work with something different. I have worked with the Pinot. I have worked with the Shiraz. I've done a little bit of the red blend. The red blend you can see turned out very purple. I don't know if you can see it real well, but you can kind of see the difference between here and here. This is much more red than that. That's purple. And that's why I did that. I just wanted to show you the difference, but I am gonna go ahead and work with the red blend a little bit more just for the darker areas. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a second coat here. It's gonna look red when it, when it comes on. And since I want it to be real dark, I'm gonna let it pool a little as well. Okay, it's gonna look really red when it comes on, but it's gonna turn purple. And then, <laughs> excuse me, I'm gonna come down here. And this one is also really dark. So just on the end of it. It'll probably, to get that really dark color, if you're looking at the photo, you're gonna see it's really, really dark right there. To get that, you're gonna have to go over this three or four times. But you will get it. So you don't have to use a pigment if you don't want to. You will get it. Okay, where else is it really dark? I'm not working on any of the outside. 
I didn't put any color in here, so I'll go ahead and use some of that because it's a little darker anyway. I'm taking liberty with the colors right now. And we're going to get really dark in here. Really dark. So I feel like a stand-up comic without an audience. And again, I'm not that funny. So if anybody has a good joke and you want to post it in comments. Of course, you know I'm going to get to the end of this and I'm going to look and there's going to be no comments. Because all you guys are going to chime in and watch this later. But that's all right. Maybe some of you are there and I just don't know it. But if you got a good joke... I don't tell jokes because I always forget the punchline and then I drive people crazy. I get to the end and I can't tell them. All right, starting to look darker and it hadn't even dried yet. So for some of the shading you know, if you want to switch color just to try your other wines, I don't know what wines you have today. If you hadn't tested your wine, then this is, an, this is a, a quick learning process for you. Let me see, what do I have here? I think those were just buds at the end and I didn't remember that that was background, so I'm gonna take some of my Pinot, because I forgot about this. Put some in here, because those are buds. Now, this is an opportunity for me to show you. So we know we have some stuff going on in the background. I don't wanna to get too busy with it, but I'm gonna, this is, P, this is Pinot, and I'm just gonna take some more and just kind of create little shadow areas. And you can kind of see how that dries. You can have some fun with this. You could do a little bit of dripping. Uh, in this last painting that I'm doing with my ballerina, she's actually dancing in wine. So I've done a lot of splashing and I've done some drip paint, um, which is kind of fun. And then you just kind of tap your brush and you can get some of that drip in there. Let's see, where can I do that some more? So I definitely think that you can have a lot of fun with painting with wine. You can have a lot of fun because, especially if you do it with friends, because you can drink a little wine, you can paint with a little wine. You don't have to paint anything that's, you know, um, a masterpiece. You know, if you can't paint, this is therapy for you. If you have never done it before, this is therapy for you. You don't need to have a perfect painting. Um, if you have something you want to paint, then it's a matter of finding a photo and possibly um, doing a transfer if you can't draw. Uh, although if you want to draw and think you could, I highly recommend you do that. Let's see, can you see me over here? Nope. I'm just kind of going back in areas. You can already kind of see where I've gone once it dries and, and you can paint it out, you know, brush it out. You can drop it out. And then the other thing I was showing you is you can create a little bit of splatter, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right, let's see what else. So I'm gonna come in. You can kind of see how already this is changing a little color. Because I did that second coat. And this one definitely, I'm just brushing out the edges of it. You guys can't see me do that. Mm 
Okay, and then I wish we had I had the white up in here because I, I obviously goofed and didn't put my leaf there. And if I had this on a canvas, I could pull that back off with water. I could have pulled it all back off, but I can't do it on watercolor paper. So not as forgiving. All right, what am I painting with next? I am going to, I think I'm gonna try a little blue. And I know you guys probably don't have that, so I'm just gonna show you a little bit when I first paint with the blue, you know, it's gonna be really, really light. I'm just gonna show you out here. I'll come back and do a little bit more. The other thing you can do is you can take some of the blue and if you mix it with the darker color, it typically will create a little bit of a gray rather than a purple because it's such a light color. So if I want to, let's see, where would I wanna do that? Maybe in here, make it a little darker. I don't know if it's gonna work with that one because it's already so light. Maybe throw it in here. I'll just paint it in there. So it's gonna come out. There is some kind of bluish purple in here. So maybe I'll put some of the blue in here. Right over the purple and see what happens. I've tested some of this, but most of what I've done so far, it's just been a fun accident. Yep, so I'm throwing a little bit of blue in here. Artistic liberty, right? here maybe some in here this one is very a very white petal there is a little bit of an edge that I didn't add so when this dries I'll, I'll put the little edge there and to be consistent I'm gonna put some down here I'll see that one you can kind of see oh, sorry sorry, sorry kind of see that looks a little gray, not too much. And I'm gonna come down here to the bottom. I'll probably put a lot in here because I want a little shadow anyway. Maybe in here. Anywhere I was supposed to have white. <laughs> because that first coat will be very light anyway. It doesn't matter. So there'll be some blues in there. All right, what other color do I have to work with? I have the Cabernet. So let's try some Cabernet, see if we get another color going on in here. So I'm gonna start with the Cabernet. Now I've been using this flat brush the whole time. Um, if you wanna go in, in fact, let me do that. Let me clean this brush. And I'm gonna to switch to a small round brush. So this one here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the Cabernet. And I think I'm gonna use it to line like these buds here. So use it for the lines. My brush might still be too wet. Sometimes if it, too much water on there, it'll just kind of thin out. And this is already fairly translucent. So you don't want water to do more. Let's see how that changes everything. Um, I'm also gonna use it on the shadows. Again, I wanna make them darker. So I'm gonna come in in places 
and throw some there. I'm mixing colors now. You're going to get to see some of the color mixing and how it looks when you do that. Up in here, where it's darker. Okay, up in here. Mm -hmm. Right in here. Kind of all over the place. Some of these areas I'd already put a little bit of color and I don't want to do too much. So I don't want to... And we'll work with a lot of um, smearing. Because you'll see that this was already too wet. That's why you have to be careful. I should have used my hair dryer. But the nice thing is you can kind of blend a little bit so it doesn't look like a stain. Um, it did bleed a little here. Wanna make sure it's fully dry. Up here, I really should have blended that out a little. It looks too much like a line. So we'll come back to that. And then here you can see it was a little too wet. So I'm getting some of that smudging in there. I don't want to tear the paper, so I'm going to dry it and pick up some of that and then leave it alone. So yeah, be careful. I'm kind of running around quickly now. I'm not paying attention to this. There's going to be a line there. <coughs> but I'm going <at> to <coughs> wait on it. Sorry about that. I need a sip of water. Okay. I am using the Cabernet. And I'm going to some of these outside lines. Trying to go places where I didn't already just paint. I may just have to do a little blow drying here. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. Because I have too many wet areas. Like I said it's a little slow to dry. Mm, look at that blue right there. I want to pick some of that up. Let me mix that. There you go. So I'm going to dry a little bit. Give you a chance to kind of look at your painting and see what you need to do a little differently. I don't want to use this on high um, because of all the noise involved. Something else I noticed just pulled over a little bit. 
and it changes my petal a little, but it's okay. So I'll make sure you can see where that one ends and the other one starts. It's pretty good. Turn that off. Okay. And let's take a look and see where we are with all this. So you can see I have a lot of color on here. Uh, you can see some of the differences in wine color, especially in the background. You'll see the second coat which create just little created little sections and you can kind of see it in the uh, splatter paint so this is where when you're creating something you kind of want to know your color palette so that you can create the difference um, between the areas um, if i had used the same paint in the background as i'd used here then you wouldn't be able to see it at some point you're going to end up with the same color um, you can go darker, uh, like I said, between here in the background and here, you obviously see a huge difference. Um, and that'll make a difference. So if you're only working with a couple of wines, you could get away with that. Um, you could probably turn it into three or four colors. And so here is my bud in the center. Uh, I didn't leave enough white for the little pieces because I'm not being really, really careful as I'm painting today. I'm just kind of demonstrating how the wine works. Um, I'm going to put a little tiny edge over here with the cab. And then I'm going to blend some of that in just a little bit. the difference to be is here. <coughs> okay. Let's see, where do I want some lines? Okay, so with that color, I'm gonna blend it out because I don't want it to be real dark. dry to be drinking more water and not so much wine and then I'm going to put a little bit of that cap behind it dry my brush just blend it a little so it's not too dark. Let's see. I also want an edge here. This one, I don't know if I just kind of made that up here. Little curve, wasn't in there originally. I did a quick transfer. So the lines are not uh, perfect where they're supposed to be or anything like that. All right. 
So I'm curious as to what you guys have been doing, besides this, obviously, with your time, besides working, if hopefully you guys are working. I know there are a lot of people that are going to be unemployed. I think unemployment is a, at a record high right now. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. Um, I'm one of those people because all my events, all the classes I teach, the art center is everything's closed. So, you know, if um, you guys look on my Facebook page or you want to go to my website, which is tutoringart.com, you can go to my personal page and it'll say tutoringart.com forward slash Vivian Davis. I see some of the other things I do, some of the other crazy mediums I've worked on in and will continue to work in. And uh, if there's you see something you like and you want to buy it or you want to share it with someone else, please. We don't know how this is going to continue. And this has been a lot of fun for me. So this cuts out every now and then. I'm not sure if it's cutting out for you as it's cutting out for me. But uh, I just had another, like interruption with the feed all right I'm gonna create a distinctive line back here but I'm gonna use the pinot in the background hard to tell what's going on so I'll have to work on that a little and um, it is about 321 so I'm going to show you let's see did we use the we use the Shiraz, Shiraz we didn't use the Merlot uh, we used the Chardonnay the Pinot and the um, red blend now the red blend again is that dark let's see if this is dry looks like it is so I'm using the darkest to create that dark area, really dark area. So I'll lay that down again, kind of heavy. And if I have some areas that I really want dark, 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 I'm going to go back like behind here and lay it on kind of thick, let it pull a little. Uh, anywhere I want serious contrast. That's going to be my darkest color. When I lay it upon lay it upon lay it, you're going to get a very dark color because you can see here that red blend, how dark it is on the right. That's just two layers. So if you keep adding layers, it's just going to get darker and darker. They just have to be dry. You know, I'm rushing through this and, you know, I have my blow dryer, but even then I've kind of haven't uh, used it as much as I probably should have. So I'm going to have a little bit of bleed here and there, and that's what you want to avoid. So let me be a lesson to you. Don't rush. So my darkest areas, I'm going back, and I'm putting a little bit of red, a, a red blend. First time I've used a red blend, I like the how deep in color it is. I like it a lot. Lighting's not the greatest here either, so hopefully when you do it at home, if you're not working on it now, work on it later, that you work in a nicely lit area. Right here. So you can see your colors better. It's actually sunny today. I don't like working on rainy days. But I'm not working in my studio space. I'm working at the kitchen counter which is a little further away, so I don't have as good light here. Um, I'm learning as I go. So as time goes on, I'm going to figure out this Facebook Live thing. And uh, I'll have a better way of you guys viewing. I would like to be able to show pictures without having to sh put my phone <laughs> on my computer screen. But I haven't... Um, mastered this yet and I've been wanting to do this for a while but just didn't have the courage 
And so as I see a lot of people, you know, that are kind of stuck, um, who are creative, you know, there's a lot of Facebook Live videos coming out. Um, some of them creative, some of them just silly creative. Uh, some of them, you know, will teach you something. Some of them will teach you what not to do. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a lot of them probably, but I found a Facebook page uh, if you like um, music, you know, like music um, that has people creating their own raves. A lot of DJs and such. That's really interesting. I kind of followed it because I thought it was just kind of fun. My ear, sorry about that. But it's a way to communicate with your friends too. When you're stuck and you can't see people. I'm a little bit of an introvert, so this hasn't been as bad for me as it is for some people. There's some color in here. Down on this one. It's kind of pink. I put some blue in there. I'm going to cover it up with a little bit of this red blend. Just see what happens. It's an experiment. Like I said, I hadn't used that color before. So I'm using it a lot because for my purposes as well. I can get to see how it looks when it dries. And then you can take some artistic liberty. You know, you can come through. I, um, I haven't really done a whole lot of that. I've just been kind of showing you the mixture of colors. And I'll play with this a little bit and then I'll post it to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> kind of like a puzzle, kind of looking for where to add more color. Now, I feel like here you'll see, um, you don't see a big difference in the shade. So I want to go back with my Pinot and I want to make this a little darker. So I'm just going to blend it out a little. And on here as well, and I'll have to figure out what color I want to make the branches, let them fade out. But anywhere I had Pinot before, if I want to make it even darker, again, I'll do, this is, this is a third coat, I think, on the Pinot. See how much darker it gets? So if I go in here, it's going to get a lot darker when it dries. I don't want it to look too much like the other color. So I'm trying not to use the Pinot at all in the flower itself. Um, so even when I build up a dark coat, it will be a different color. So you will still be able to see the flower in the foreground. So let's see, maybe here. Okay. So that's where I'm far, about as far as I'm going to get. Um, there are... Some other things um, that I can show you on a bigger scale, if you guys want to see. And I'll do another class um, in the next week or two. I'm going to throw a little splatter paint in here as my little final touch for the moment. Then I'll do some more definition. Uh, oops, I want my red blend. And then we'll wrap this up. It's about... 328. If you had any questions, uh, which obviously I couldn't see because I did notifications, then I will be on and I will respond in the comments so you guys can see that. And it'll also be for anyone that takes this or follows this uh, class at a later time and couldn't watch it now. Um, if you have questions, you know, obviously if you comment at all, I'm going to get notification and I'll be glad to answer. Um, I can give you some of the wine, um, wineries I've used, some of the wine, different wines I've used. Um, I have 
a couple more samples back in my studio at the De Art Center. And then in a few weeks, um, when hopefully all this blows over and we all come out healthy, God willing, um, I will be doing a short class. And in person, it'll be a lot easier to see the colors uh, because, again, on my phone, it's not as, you can't see the contrast as much. Like in person, it's a whole of different story. And if you're doing it now, you'll see that as you're painting. Um, you can use any kind of a, a photo reference when you're practicing, so don't feel bad about Google searching and finding something. Um, it just don't make it something you sell if you're using someone else's photograph, that's all. Um, for demonstrations and examples, I don't, I'm not too worried about it, um, but uh, it's just best practice to use your own if you can. And, you know, you don't have to drink wine <laughs> while you're doing it. It's kind of fun. But if you want to host a watch party uh, with this video and, you know, have your friends drink some wine, have kind of a happy hour and do some painting, you can do that too. If you have, again, any questions, make sure you comment and I'll get back with you on that. And thank you so much for joining me today. Check out my webpage um, on Facebook. It, you should be on it now, which is Tutoring Art. Instagram, it's Tutoring Art. And my website is tutoringart.com. I do a lot of events, um, instructional classes, as well as fundraisers. I do painting parties. Um, we paint on canvas, on tote bags. We paint on pallets, variety of things. Either I can teach it here locally in Virginia, or I have an artist up in Maryland, Tara Mayers, who's also teaching up in Carroll County, Howard County, and a little bit of um, uh, southern Pennsylvania uh, above West Whitminster. So, so if you're interested in, in any of this, just get back in touch with me. Thanks for supporting me. Appreciate that and hope to see you guys again very soon. Take care and stay healthy.